Hi, my name's Keith Cooper of Northlight Images, and in this video I'm going to concentrate on some reasons why you shouldn't buy a tilt-shift lens. Well, you know, why would I say you shouldn't buy a tilt-shift lens, given I use them a lot for my work, I'm an architectural photographer, um, I've tested lots, I've got videos, and I've got a book that I've written all about how to use them. What it really is, is that I'm, and this came about particularly recently when Fujifilm announced their new 30 millimeter tilt shift lens. They've announced 110 mil as well, but um, I, I will probably be testing the 30 mil before the 110. And, and I say, I use these lenses a lot. And somebody said, this is great, tilt shift lens, so I won't have to do focus stacking for my landscapes. And I thought, yeah, um, I think you're going to be disappointed. And this video is really about some of the things you can use tilt shift lenses. Now, I'm going to talk mostly about tilt here um, because that's the bit that people have the most difficulty in understanding. Shift is, for me, from, as an architectural photographer, almost always much more useful because that allows me to take pictures of buildings without them pointing the camera up and making them look like they're falling over backwards. It just corrects verticals and things like that. It does lots of other things as well. But, and I've got videos covering all of this. But this is about when people say tilt shift lens. What do they actually mean? Um, given that the new lens from Fujifilm is some, you know, just under £4,000, um, this is not a trivial matter to get. And one of the things I do, do know is that um, people buy these lenses they don't do what they think they're going to do with them or they can't get them to work the way they think they should and they sell them on again to recover some of the money. Now, the nice thing about people rushing out and buying tilt shift lenses who've had a clue how to use them is that a proportion of those people will not be able to use them and will sell them on and that means for the rest of us who want to buy nearly new uh, tilt shift lenses at a reduced cost, then that's, that's, that's a benefit to us. But I'd much rather that people bought the lenses knowing or at least having an idea of what you can do with them. Now, the tilt shift effect is what a lot of people first think of. And that's this sort of miniature world type look. Uh, and that's produced by using tilt, thin plane of focus running down through a subject. It exacerbates out of focus areas. And if you get the picture right, it can actually have that look of a model, uh, yeah, miniature world effect. This is such a tiny bit of what you can do with tilt shift lenses that if you're buying one, certainly if you're spending nearly four thousand pounds on a lens and just to do stuff like this, I would suggest there are cheaper solutions. Now I use Canon 5DS, but I also now use a Fuji GFX 100S, and I can use that with adapters, so I can use lenses like this. This is Canon 17mm tilt shift, exceedingly wide angle, very useful. I use it in architecture a lot. I've got 24, I've got some others. You can, if you just want to do artistic tilt effects, you can get lenses like this. Now, I've got a, a review looking at this. This is TT Artisan ones. This is a 50mm uh, f1.2 four tilt lens. There's no shift on this. This is just a fully manual tilt lens. Now this one has got gearing on it. So this is obviously meant for video use as well for setting things and that. That's a fully manual lens. Now that's tilt. What tilt is about is about instead of the plane of focus being like a flat plane at a certain distance in front of you. Think of focusing on a wall for example that you're facing square on. The plane of focus, ideally, if your image is in focus, is that wall. Once you tilt a lens and the tilt happens, and I'll just slacken this one off because I think this one shows quite nicely the effect. You can see the tilt there. Either way, I'm bending the lens. Um, the tilt tilts the plane of focus in a, I won't say a simple way, but a, a you know, a in a particular and definable way. You do not need to know the maths for this. Um, when I wrote the book here on how to use tilt shift lenses, I made a deliberate choice to keep the maths out of it. Now, that does mean, yeah, you know, one person did complain to me that I didn't include the maths, I didn't. There are references in the appendices for people if you want that sort of stuff. But 
most photographers do not want to have to do any maths when they're thinking about their setting up their photography. And I've tried to pull that, you know, pull that through the whole bit of the book. The most I carry around with me is a little table that I printed out that has a list of numbers that gives me a crib sheet for setting tilt. And I've said when you change tilt, typically for this lens, this one here, this miniature welter, I've tilted the lens downwards, or in this case, I've tilted it upwards. And then so the plane of focus runs as a sharp plane like that, runs through the picture. If you rotate the lens by 90 degrees, and you can, you don't have to have it 90 degrees, you can have it less than that, you can have a vertical plane of focus. Now in this particular picture here, the plane of focus runs along the edge of the canal, so that's sharp, right the way through to the distance, and I will just line the shot up, the plane of focus is running just to the side of me, so I've tilted the lens that direction, it's running just beside me, and I've waited for this guy to walk across the bridge, at which point I've taken the picture, just to have a look, yeah, just to get, to show the effect of that vertical plane of tilt. That's quite a creative look, and I've deliberately shot this with, this was with an adapted lens, an old medium format lens adapted to a mirrorless camera. With this particular one, it shows the sort of look you get for out of focus. It exacerbates out of focus. Well, that's okay if you want to do sort of creative things like that. This, this one here, the miniature. But what about using that plane of focus? Now, this example, this was taken in Colorado. It's looking up an aspen tree. And I've tilted the lens so that the plane of focus runs up the trunk of the tree, up into the tree. So it gets, I'm right close to this. Um, one of the things I always find, if you walk through a, a, some woodland of aspens in, this, in, in Colorado, and where the branches have come off, you get these what look like eyes. And it's quite creepy uh, to have just trees surrounding or with eyes on them. Uh, so very, it, it, with the right conditions can make for an interesting picture. But anyway, this one here, the plane of focus, tilting the lens, is running up the tree here. So camera pointed up. And in fact, if I remember rightly, lens tilted down, plane of focus runs under here and runs up the tree. That's easy enough to do. Once again, that's, that's a fairly specialised use. And the problem comes when people think, ah, oh, well, if I can move this plane of focus around, I can take a landscape picture and have the plane of focus low down so that it gets the ground in and it gets the whole scene in front of me in focus. Well, that is potentially true if your landscape has no vertical relief in it. Um, if it's flat, it could be tilted, be looking up a hill or whatever, because it's a plane of focus. That means that if you've got some flowers a few feet in front of you, the plane of focus can run through them so that you can end up with sharp focus towards the bottom of the flower. The tops of the flowers that go into the top of the field can be out of focus, um, which is probably not what you want. Because if you're going to the trouble of doing focus stacking, it's because you've decided for various reasons, um, and I won't go into their utility or otherwise, that you want the entirety of your landscape photograph pin sharp. Now, I tend to say there are reasons that you might choose not for that, for compositional reasons, but that's my personal choices of how I, I express it. But you know, these are relatively specialized uses. It's worth noting that I couldn't come up with a clear landscape photography example. And I'm still looking, uh, I'm heading away on holiday at some point, and I will look again at coming up with a great landscape photo that really shows the benefit of using tilt. I, as yet, I've been looking and have not come across one. Now, I've come across landscape photographs which benefit from using shift. So, lowering the horizon in a picture, rather than tilting the camera upwards, which with a wide angle lens makes things lean in like that, you shift the lens upwards. Now, that makes a difference. I use shift in landscape photography quite a lot because I quite like my trees looking vertical. Uh, and it helps if I don't want the horizon running across the middle of the scene. But actual practical uses of tilt? Well, here's one from some of my architectural work. And this is looking up a wall. And the entire wall is sharp. This was taken with a Canon TSE 45, so a 45 millimeter lens. And it's looking up and I've had to set 
the tilt to run the plane of focus. And this comes up to what to me is more serious and generally applicable uses of tilt is where you have planar objects which are not flat in front of you. So tilt is great for taking photographs, looking along a wall, looking along a ceiling, looking along a floor or anything like that. You have an object that cuts across your scene and you want it sharp. A bit of tilt can make that sharp. Now that's great, but that's not the same as people saying, ah, this just gives me lots more depth of field. Tilting the lens doesn't give you more depth of field. It changes how that depth of field is arranged in the space in front of you. And it's, it's, that's the key to it. Tilt, in many ways, is the hardest. I, I do teaching, and I do one-to-one -one teaching as well here in the UK, um, about how to use advanced kit like this. And I know from teaching people different aspects of how to use kit that people tend to pick up vertical shift really easily. It's about the verticals. Sideways shift, they tend to think of that, it's often thought of as just useful for making panoramic shots. Um, it's potentially more useful by using it to change the horizontal perspective. Now, I've got videos looking at this, and even more so you're looking at diagonal shift. Have a look at the tilt shift playlist on the channel here, and you'll find I've got loads of videos. And of course, yes, uh, obligatory plug, um, I have written a book about it, but you knew that, hopefully. Uh, so we've got shots here, this is looking up. In fact, this particular one here, here's the camera looking up the wall. Now, you should be able to see, okay, I'll cut this into the picture, you should be able to see the lens tilted and looking upwards like that. And if I just go back, you'll see the view from the camera and you'll see that, yeah, it's sharp all the way up. One thing to note, this close, uh, these bricks here are slightly out of focus. They're not quite as sharp as the bricks here because it's a 3D structure. The plane of focus, it's not a flat plane, it's a wedge. So it's quite thin near the camera. So you have to be very careful with placing the plane of focus, but that's a practical use of tilt. And that's the setup. Now, another practical use, I do engineering photography as well. This is in the uh, basement of a building. There's some electrical switch gear and I have specifically tilted the lens sideways to run the plane of focus along the panel of instruments. Now, you can see my camera bag and a few other things down in the corner here. The actual image as used, was this was cropped out. This is the full image, but it was cropped out. So by tilting the lens sideways, I run the plane of focus along the instruments here, and they're sharp right the way through. So it gives a perceived sharpness and increase of depth of field. But it's all about the perceptions of it. One other bit I hear people mention is, oh, well, I can use um, tilt and shift for macro. Well, there's one thing to remember here, um, and this is an area where I found people are, much as the landscape bit, can be disappointed in tilt not doing what they first think it's going to do. When you look at something like this picture with the plane of focus running almost dead straight out, so it's got the sharp features in it, it's got the soft features, you think, wow, that'd be really great if I'm doing macro and whatever. Turns out that the closer you focus, the more physical lens tilt you need to get the lens tilted. Now, these lenses, uh, this is the Canon TSC 17, this has a tilt of about seven degrees on it, seven, seven and a half degrees. Uh, longer focal lengths tend to have a little bit more tilt. Um, this one here looks like it's got nearly 10 degrees of tilt. Um, and, you know, it's marked on, the, the scales are marked on there. Um, the tilt can put the plane of focus anywhere you like, sufficiently far away from the camera. Once you're close up, and this is showing a, a particular, I can't remember which particular lens this was I tested. This is from part of my lens. I've got lots of written reviews of all of these on the North Light Images website. But this is the maximum tilt of the plane of focus I can get at that working distance with the amount of physical lens tilt available on the lens. Now, if you use view cameras like this one I've cunningly got hidden at the back here, you can get a lot more tilt, but they're tricky to set up. Um, and you know, it's, this, this is expensive stuff if you're doing it digitally. Um, but 
Remember this limitation, because these lenses only tilt physically so much. These give you all kinds of useful effects at reasonable distances, more than a few meters. Try working close up and you'll suddenly find that that tilt that you were looking for, for your macro shots to get more depth of field and things, just isn't there. Um, so, absolutely great are lenses like this. I love them, particularly, I use shift more than tilt, but shift, tilt, really useful. But be careful what you think you're going to get out of these, out of having one of these. Um, so I'm not going to complain too much because it's making reasonably priced second-hand used lenses available to more people. But um, I do think that it's a shame that people go out, buy these lenses and think, oh yes, I'm going to be able to do all this, and then find that no. Um, or, you know, or they end up just trying to set tilt by sort of trial and error. Well, you might discover how tilt properly works by trial and error, since it's a combination of the lens tilt and the lens focus setting that moves the plane of focus. Now, you might discover that, but if you're just trying the lens, just seeing what it does, I'm going to suggest it's highly unlikely you're going to come up with a reliable way of setting lens tilt to achieve what you want. And the whole key of understanding this stuff is it allows you to look at a scene and think, right, I've got to take a photograph of pictures on this wall. I'm looking at them at this angle. Um, for the aperture I've got, will they all be focused? Would a little bit of lens tilt help? So taking photographs on the wall, a little bit of tilt that direction makes the plane of focus run more along the wall. I'm not interested about other things, so take that. But have a look at the playlist. There are loads of articles on the North Light site. I put links to all of this stuff at the bottom, uh, the, you know, the notes for the video. Um, so what I say is, please, you know, find out how to use tilt shift lenses. Enjoy them, get the photographic experiences you can. But you know, do a little bit beforehand to find out what you're actually going to get, because I'd hate the thought of somebody spending 4,000 quid on a 30mm lens for their uh, GFX 100 Mark II or whatever they've decided, and then thinking, oh, this doesn't do what I thought it was going to do. No, it does what it does. Just what you thought it was going to do ain't what it does. So I hope this is of some use. I've got lots of other resources. If you've got questions, please do ask because it was somebody's question this morning that gave me the idea for just doing this quick video. So thanks for watching and goodbye.